Morning guys on the farm in Thailand with Lee and Boston. That's right. The little big man has been out with us for quite a few days now. He's keeping up quite well with the biggies. So uh, he's one of the herd now. Come on Treacle. Right, so today while I'm walking around, something I wanted to cover that's popped into me noggin over the last couple of weeks really but something happened yesterday that I thought right it's now the time to do this video and it's things that scare me here on the farm now it's not going to be a long list of scary creatures that could probably kill you or uh, hurt you quite badly uh, but I will throw those in right at the start but there's a uh, bigger more underlying things that worry me more or scare me more here on the farm so first off let's go through the creatures I would say bottom of the list is uh, scorpions. So you've got your little, your little grey, grey, white, creamy coloured, I suppose. Uh, scorpions, they give you a bit of a belt. I've had two, two stings from those. Toon's had a couple as well. No, she's had one since we've been here. Uh, and then you've got your big black ones. The big black ones, although they, they look like something out of the film The Mummy, they're good eating. Well, they're both good eating. But they reckon the smaller ones pack more of a punch if they get to sting you. Uh, thankfully, though, we haven't put that to the test with the big ones. So uh, caught one the other day when I was moving a, a fallen coconut tree and uh, tuned through it straight on a fire and had that. Um, I had some popcorn instead. All right, Brownie. How shiny is your hair, girl? Looks like I've been oiling you up. Uh, so next is snakes. Yeah, snakes only second second on the list, really. I think it's just over a period of time you get used to it. Oh, I've just got bloody battered from behind. All right, buddy. I wasn't prepared with my naughty stick and I've lost my bag off the end. Oh, well. Oh, no, mate. Don't lay there like you meant it. So that was an epic fail, mate. Yeah, so snakes. Um, just getting used to them, really. Uh, something I do fear more than the snakes, though, are those quite large centipedes. They give you a hell of a belt. Now, I haven't been bitten by one. I've had them crawl on me a couple of times. I've got away with it. But everyone that you talk to that's had a nip off those, that is bloody nasty. So uh, they're quite sneaky as well and fast. The next thing really is dogs and when I say scared of dogs I'm, I'm not particularly scared of dogs myself obviously we've having quite a few over the years it's just dogs after the herd two weeks ago we had one that was on a full sprint across the land after the herd we've got the uh, the post and the fence to put a perimeter up but uh, our land dispute is still ongoing so uh, yeah the goats can wander off and obviously people's dogs can wander on so um luckily i've still got a fantastic turn of pace and i can shout very loud and i was waving my stick and uh he went but you can imagine this little fella uh he's not to 60 is very good but um his flat out speed is terrible and there's no way he could outrun a dog as none of these could either so that is a bit of a concern so that that does scare me a hell of a lot but as far as physical things like um creatures go that's it for the farm i know there's lots and lots of other things um that could be quite nasty for you out here but that's that's it the next thing then is is uh things that come outside of creatures that can hurt you or your livestock and that's falling over i fall over quite a lot touch wood though not as much as i used to i'm going down the slopes and that where uh, the, the goats are, say, are, are, are crossing a little stream and that sort of thing. Because we've had quite a lot of rain now, so they're, they're quite choosy where they cross. And then they can jump quite far. And it's, it's just, um, over the last few weeks, it's brought it home to me that I've got to be extra careful. If you fall over and smack your head when you're out here and Toon's not expecting me back for two, two and a half hours or so, then uh, I don't want to be bloody bleeding out. Or worse than that, bullseye having his wicked way with me and I'll just wake up with a bloody sore backside. 
oh, I'm Boston, get in there, mate. And I could say, well, you uh, used to teach health and safety, mate. But at the end of the day, you, you've got to wear what you you think suitable for the for the job out here. If you wore safety boots or something like that out here, you look like you're walking around on two bloody oversized golf drivers. The mud just sticks to you. So uh, flip-flops on the grass. I just float across the surface over the back there. Don't know whether you can see, they're just starting to grow cassava. And the next one, and, and it's second on my list, it's quite a short list guys, but these are the two, the two main ones coming up. This started when I was, let me think now, 24 years old. And I got a phone call from one of my very, very best mates. We've been best mates at school and we played rugby together for years and years. And uh, I used to spend a lot of my time around his parents' house when we were youngsters, underage drinking and all that terrible sort of thing. He rang me up and he said, my, my dad's passed away. And bless him, Mickey, he'd, uh, he'd beaten cancer for quite a few years and the bloody thing had come back. And correct me if I'm wrong memory, but I seem to recall that he was just 53 years of age and uh, robbed. Lovely guy, lived life to the full. Smoked like a chimney to, in his early days. Enjoyed coming out for a beer. He even used to drive our minibus on a, away games for a Peterborough Colts rugby team when we were younger. And uh, he would enjoy a few beers with us in the evening once we got back to the clubhouse as well. I had a lot, a lot of time for the, for the guy. And I used to, when I was even at school, I used to spend um, many enjoyable Sundays at the local, local stock car racing venue in a place called Old Walton. And my mate Michael, he used to drive a little Honda Civic in the stock cars and his, his dad got a matching one to go into the, uh, into the adults stock cars as well. Uh, a lot, a lot of fun. Of course, he left a very young, young family, two sons and a, and a daughter. It's when I hear certain songs, um, it just brings back memories, you know, very happy memories, but, but sad at the same time. But what, what's brought it back a little bit more was um, towards the back end of last year, and uh, my mum called me, and my lovely uncle Don had passed away. Been suffering quite a long time. That guy over the years, I'd never ever seen him be in a bad mood. He was so happy-go-lucky, brilliant family life, and... Uh, yeah, it was, uh, although he'd had a good innings, that was very sad. And then, only a couple of months ago, my lovely Uncle John, who I was probably the closest to out of all my uncles, um, he finally lost his fight with his particular condition. Yeah, incredibly sad. And although, yeah, the, my uncles racked up a fair few, a fair few miles on the clock, um... It still does bring it home how fragile life is and uh, how quick it can go. And it does get you thinking, well, it certainly gets me thinking. I'm 49 in November and I'm, all my, I'm more than halfway there, aren't I? More than halfway there. There's no way I'm going to get a really long in innings. Wee, too many rugby tours will take its toll before I get anywhere near like 90 years old or anything like that. So um, I don't regret what I've been doing in the past, but I have abused my body. I haven't abused many other people's bodies, but I did abuse mine for way too long. So let's say at best, we're just over halfway. What have you achieved? Well, in the last three years, we've achieved a lot, but I would say in the last eight or nine months, me and Tuna have achieved more than we've ever had in our life and we're happier than we ever have been in our life to date. And it just does scare the shit out of me that this could all get taken away in a blink of an eye through an accident or a medical condition. And I'd be turning in my grave, guys. I finally found my, my utopia. 
with my perfect misses, well she is in my eyes, thought of losing all that. I just uh, don't want to be too negative, but it does does scare me. And that's what the video is about, what scares me the most. So that's number two. So what the heck can number one be? Let's try and lighten it up. Well, unfortunately I can't because something happened two evenings ago. It was my first trip with my wife in an ambulance in Thailand. Yeah, we had the blue and white lights flashing and the sirens going and uh, we were off on our way to hospital. We have been to hospital before together many times uh, but usually it's for a fishing hook getting stuck in my my finger or with Toon's thyroid. I won't go into too much detail about it but it's we thought it was appendicitis so that was our main concern and the doctor's concern initial concerns when we first got there. Oh the tractor's a bit noisy isn't it? He's just busy um, digging up all his topsoil so it can get washed away in the next rain. Uh, it's to do with lady stuff guys so um, she got a shot for pain killing and uh, she's on some strong medication she's got to go back in another five days uh, and it looks like she's going to get referred to a, a big hospital. Right I just need to catch these up so they don't eat next door's cassava. Always you missus. Get out. Get out. You're all right, Boston. You can't eat anything, mate. I'll poke your ball bag, mate. Go on, get over there. Don't raise your hair to me, fella. On them nuts. I'll get a room, you two. Sort them out, Boston, mate. Oh, for fuck's sake. Where was I? I do seem to get sidetracked when I'm out with this lot. I can't multitask, that's my problem. Try to video them, talk about something else, and then chase them as well. So I had quite a long time sitting outside A&E that evening. And it just fills you with bloody dread. I've left my life in England and, and never ever want to go back there other than to see family and a few friends now and again. Uh, when that will be, God only knows. I don't hold any sort of lingering pangs to get back there any day soon, really. So, incredibly happy and, and of course, fortunate to live in a place that makes me very, very happy with the person who, in my eyes, is, is perfect for me. And the thought of something happening to Toon, that scares the absolute bejesus out of me you know it just fills me with dread that if she's if, if something was to happen to her this would mean nothing to me other than we started it together and didn't get it finished it does bring it home that how how fragile our setup is yes soon's got quite a big family but they're spread all over the place and the supporting his family are you know, me and Toon enjoy being on our own. You know, we don't, we don't, we tend not to mingle that that well. In all honesty, the thought of flying solo out here uh, is not appealing at all. You know, and, that, and that's not even delving into the legal side of things with marriage visas or retirement visa and being on land that isn't yours. You know that, that they're just they're just other bits and bobs that would would add to the the situation if it arose. So there's our two main things. One is something happening to me before we get to a stage where I can start to sit back and think, do you know what? We're not far off cracking this and just soaking it in. Just the t the tasks that we've undertaken and seeing everything develop to a point where you think, do you know what? We haven't done a bad job here. At the moment, we're, we're, we're quite still a way off that, and uh, although things are moving really quickly, um, we've still so, so much to do. Sometimes I do feel like I'm racing. I want to get to a point where I can, I can uh, sit back a little bit more. It is good being out with this lot for four hours a, a day or so. I'd like to spend a bit more time sitting back, watching this lot with Toon and... Uh, we're just in two camps at the moment. Tootin's got her stuff to do and I've got my stuff to do. And we're working as a team, so... I think I've said before, while I'm out with this lot, uh, Tootin's usually 
cleaning the goat house out and of course we've got Yo-Yo with, uh, oh he's got a name, with her newborn, he's uh, TJ for Terminus Junior. So she's got to sort her and him out and uh, sort the house out. She won't be going off to cut any food but uh, the good thing is um, you can see all the, the pasture here. I'm going to do a video on, on, on the pasture development side of things. But the goats are filling up um, more and a lot quicker. I only let them out like about a minute before I turn the video on and, and I can see already, I don't know if you can pick up on the camera, they're visibly getting fatter by the minute. So uh, whereas before they're already eating a small amount with each mouthful, now they're getting a bloody great gobful each time. So that's helped because Toon's not in a state to go cutting um, additional weeds. As far as Yo-Yo goes, she is being fed in the house, but just cut a few weeds around the house for her. So she's all right. Another couple of days she can come out with us. Another couple of days after that, then uh, TJ can come out as well. So with any problem, of course, unless you're an empty, you don't think about um, how you can come up with a bit of a plan, get something in place. And, and our plan is, well, we've already started it really with the goat house build. I was going to do a lot more work doing that, but I did very, very little. Uh, we've just got people in to do it. One of the guys that was doing that build, he's now doing our uh, reworking our poultry shed video coming soon. So he was here yesterday making a start on that. He was supposed to come back today, but uh, he's got another job come in and uh, it pays better than we do, so he's gone there. No, it's a family member asked him to go and do some electric. So he's gone to sort that out and hopefully be back tomorrow to carry on. Um, so these are jobs that, although Toon and I would have done in the past, not as well as these guys, of course, we've just farmed it out, guys. We're just uh, getting people to do it now. It's unfortunate because we had a lovely, lovely woman, one of Toon's very best friends, Pioi. She was helping us on a regular part-time basis on the farm. Um, but she just said it's just, it's too hard work. I mean, she, she's in her 60s now. Uh, so it's only really selective bits that we can get her to help, um, which are few and far between. Most of the stuff is hard graft. Long term, I think we're going to be looking at getting someone in full time and we're probably going to go down the route that we tried to go down a year or so ago well over a year now where we had a guy called Pyong guy from Burma we want to get someone from somewhere like that on a work visa and you basically sponsor them and uh, they stay with you so we'd, we'd knock up a small house for him just like a timber thing but it, he would build that uh, but I, I don't think it will be him although we have made uh, we haven't made contact but we have heard on the grapevine he's back in Thailand uh, but he hasn't contacted us um, so the idea being then if we could get someone like him and possibly his wife and then they could set up use my pointy stick somewhere around here a little abode for themselves so they've got a little bit of privacy away from us uh, you've also then got your, your security during the night then anything happens to me or Toon or it could be just something that we need to go off site and uh, pick up a goat or something uh, then we can go they've got to be working here anyway so um, they can just put their feet up for a few hours and just take care of the place security wise so that's the idea but we want our projects finished first the goat house is, is no further along, it's still waiting for the gate. Um, Toon's ordered some metal for the for an alert to fabricate that. Once that goes on, we're then going to go and try and increase the herd. We've lined up some prospective um, sellers and uh, we'll get out and about and uh, try and get some more pregnant does to add. They will then be staying in the goat house over yonder on the island. They will be goat house goats. Uh, until the island has greened up. It is greening up in patches. We had such heavy downpours. Everywhere has just got washed. It's got totally rinsed the area. And uh, to give you an idea, um, from this farm here coming into here, there's two big drainage pipes because it's slightly higher the land on the right hand side here. 
and it just comes through like a raging torrent. It, that's how heavy the, the rainfall was. It has washed a lot of seed. Luckily we didn't sow it all. Another bit of luck all round the top of the lake here, the access road. I seeded that a, few, a couple of days after, well no, the day after the heaviest rain and that's taken a lot lot better. I dare say some of the seed is now inside the fish in the lake um, but there are patches where the, the, the seed has pulled up and uh, it's sprouting in patches there so again we'll, we'll just reseed it um, where it's a bit bare. Once that's established then we can let the new goat herd out and uh, introduce this herd to the new additions. Look at that pasture guys, incredible.